Hi there Project Marsh Pit, my name is PenguinX and this is going to be my very first upload on the channel so I'm very excited to be here and I hope you all enjoy this one. So this is a black and white OU battle against a Smogon mod, a PMP director and also a very good friend of mine and that is Falgen. So um, yeah, many of you may know him from the team building guide back on a PMP for Gen 4, that would have been about a year now I think since that. And um, also that prediction guide here on Project Marsh Pit. So, um, Let's, let's take a look at the teams. First off, mine's uh, built around uh, an SD Luke sweep. So Scarftar helps get rid of ghosts, stuff like Gengar. Um, also helps pursue bulky psychic types such as uh, Celebi and Latias. Gets them out of the way. Um, so that's why Scarftar is there. Uh, Dragonite just smashes stuff to pieces. It's CB, so it's just like, like the best Pokemon in the meta. Um, Rotom Watch and Scizor just rack up damage quickly with that uh, Volt Switch and U-Turn combo. So that's mainly what I'm going for there. Uh, Gliscor is the oddball, uh, doesn't really fit properly. I did throw the team together very, very quickly, so um, Gliscor just doesn't fit at all. And um, I did actually go on to ladder with this team a little bit later, and I just kicked out Gliscor almost immediately just because it's absolutely terrible on this team. Um, opens up too many weaknesses to some two very, very prominent pokes in the meta. So, um, yeah, so looking at Faldron's playstyle, um, well, knowing Faldron's playstyle really helps me, like, determine what kind of set it's going to be using. So first off, um, I'm going to consider the Heatran at Titar. Heatran pretty much exclusively runs Stealth Rock sets. Um, if you look at the common sets of the meta, they're going to be specially defensive and Air Balloon with Stealth Rocks. So uh, I'm just going to go on a limb and guess that's going to be the Stealth Rocker. And then um, Tarantar is probably going to be something like Choice Scarf, Choice Band, Chopple for attacks, Lefties for attacks, something else specially defensive. Does something like that, most likely not Stealth Rocks. So. Um, moving on, I know Fal really likes his Choice Scarf Terrakian, so I guess that would be the set he's going to be using here. Um, and also considering that if it wasn't Choice Scarf, he'd be weak to so much stuff, like Hidden Power Ground, Volcarona, DD Dragonite, it makes sense for his Terrakion to be Choice Scarfed, so that's why I guessed that. Um, Skarmish is obviously going to be Spiker, um, what else would you use Skarm for, realistically? Um, Latias could be Calm Mind and Raw, could be Specs, Scarf, but then again I know, I know Fal probably wouldn't use those because they're outclassed by Latios. And looking at the team, those sets don't really fit that well either. So it's either going to be Calm Mind or Raw or Calm Mind and Hidden Power Fire, which is a set you see a lot now on like High Ladder um, high ladder of PO. Um, it's a set I really do find annoying because like everyone's using Volt Switch and U-Turn combination and um, HP Fire Latia just absolutely decimates Rotom Wash and Scizor. So easy, it's not it's not even funny how bad um how bad that, that core does against Latias. So um yeah, so it could be Carmine and Raw, could be Carmine HP Fire, not entirely sure, but looking at team preview, could be either really. Um so basically I just need to scout for that um in the actual battle. And then uh, Celebi is his last. From what I've seen, um, from what I've seen, Fal pretty much exclusively runs uh, Nasty Pot Celebi. Um, normally the bulkier sets, so stuff like uh, depending on how much speed it runs, things like about forty speed EVs, enough to outspeed like especially defensive Drachi. Um, I know he tends to to use that set quite a lot. So um, Dragonite's gonna be a very nice switch into that. Resist Giga Drain, Hidden Power Fine is immune to Earth Power if he has it. Uh, Gliscor can outspeed if it's one of those bulky slow sets, and one of Kyo's with a uh, Flight Gem Acrobatics. And Tarantac can also switch in on anything but a boosted Giga Drain and uh, KO with Crunch or a, just trap it with Pursuit. So, yeah, that's mainly the game plan. Just uh, get rid of his Celebi and Latias and then just go for an SD Luke sweep. Terrakion's going to be annoying. Um, it's not until you like get into the actual team preview that you realise how much of a threat something is. And for me, it's normally Terrakion. Um, yeah, so basically I just tried to, need to try and keep um, Rotom and uh, Scizor quite healthy for that since uh, because Gliscor is now an offensive set it isn't going to be taking those uh, Scarf Stone Edges nice at all really so yeah let's get into the battle so I'm just going to leave a Rotom and he's going to leave with Scarm and uh, as soon as I send in a Rotom I realise that massive Pokegen error in that I have Thunderbolt over Volt Switch and that sucks because it just completely ruins that core that U-turn Volt, Volt Switch core straight down the drain already so Regardless, I know uh, Skarmy's going to want to switch out, because uh, Foul's very conservative. Not going to over-predict turn 1, obviously, just going to go straight to Celebi or Latias. I'm just going to predict that very, very offensive move, um, and that's mainly just going to uh, put a lot of pressure on him now. So, he's got Celebi in against Escarftar. He can't do anything, um, even if he nasty plots. He, he, he can't risk it feeling that crunch. So he's going to have to switch out and uh, take that pursuit for a massive amount of damage. It's going to take him down about 20%, which is brilliant. So. It's going to allow me to put it for him. I wrote him to put loads more pressure on his team later in the game. 
So he's going to go into Terrakion here and then double switch back into back out into Heatran, predicting my um, Gliscor switch. And that actually tells me a lot. That does tell me that his Terrakion is Choice Scarfed. If it's Choice Banded, he will just go straight for the Stone Edge, uh, since that does 2 at KO defensive Gliscor. Um, but because my Gliscor is SD Acrobatics, I'm not going to switch into that, obviously, on like a potential Band or Scarf Stone Edge. I'm just going to go straight into my Rotom. It's physically defensive. It's 252 HP, 220 defense, uh, so I can take a close combat easily. And that's very nice. So um, I do actually get a very nice matchup there with Rotom against Heatran, knowing he's not going to want to risk losing his Stealth Rock at, at this point in the game. Um, I'm just going to double switch back out into uh, Tarantize, he goes out to Celebi, and just get off a second pursuit for the KO, which is very, very nice. So Fal goes into Heatran here, and uh, as I'm locked into Pursuit, I'm going to have to switch out. Just going to choose to go into Rotom as he's at Switch Rocks, and as it, Heatran is immune to fire. Uh, resist Dragon and also has this Air Balloon still intact. It's going to be very annoying for my CB Dragonite, so I'm guess uh, I'm guessing he's going to want to keep it for later. And for that reason, I'm going to go for a Will O Wisp, predicting a switch. And uh, this does work out nicely. He does go into his Latias, which is going to be very, very nice with resi residual damage on it with um, Sandstorm and Burn. But unfortunately, that Will O Wisp does miss, which is unfortunate. Not really sure how much that matters in the long run, but um, it might force him to recover a couple of turns earlier. Not entirely sure. Um, that's, that's all really just Ethereum on at that point. So, um, so I'm going to switch on to Scissor at this point. Um, hopefully going to try and scale for that HP fire by switching to t -tar next turn. But he does, actually, he does actually go straight into Heatran. And that's going to be a terrible, terrible matchup for me. Obviously he's expecting my Rotom Watch was Scarfed and uh, not Chester Rest. Which I don't, I don't actually mention that yet. It is a Chester Rest set. Um, and he wants to like, maybe get a potential Flash Fire boost. So obviously this isn't a good matchup for me, so predicting that Flamethrower, Lava Plume, Fire Blast, whatever, Fire Move, I'm going to switch back into Rotom. Uh, he does unfortunately get a Flamethrower Burn here, meaning I have to rest a couple of turns earlier than I would have liked, but again, I doubt it's had a large effect on the outcome of the battle. So, so Fal decides to go for, um, he does, decides to go into Latias as I go for that rest, and I'm going to take this opportunity to switch into my Tyranitar to attempt to trap with Pursuit. But uh, unfortunately he, has to go the, he actually goes for the roll here, predicting my switch to Tyranitar or Scizor, and this is going to force me into my Gliscor, so here I'm going to mess up big time. Uh, I decided to pull a double switch into my Titar, thinking Fal would just go for the Dragon Pulse, not wanting to switch in Skarmory, fearing a taunt. Um, obviously I'd forgotten that um, Raw had already shown my Gliscor doesn't have Toxic Orb or Leftovers, so Fal would probably already know at this point that I was running the SD Acrobatics set, and it's just going to switch straight out into his Skarmory, which counters this set very nicely. Um, Scarf Tar really can't touch uh, Skarm, so I'm forced to um, give him a free layer of spikes at this point. So, um, because um, Scarf Tar can't really do anything, I'm going to have to switch out into Rotom, and I'm actually going to go for a Will O Wisp pin, knowing that he isn't going to uh, bring in Heatran on a Rotom, and uh, knowing that nothing else on his team really appreciates a burn. Um, so Fal actually decided to switch in his own Tyrantar, and unfortunately um, I missed another Will-O-Wisp, meaning I have to take another turn of Sandstorm damage to get this thing burned, and this will actually come into play a little later. So, although Fal obviously is using his, this thing as Death Fodder, because why else would you go into Tyrantar on a Rotom when you've already seen it as a Will-O-Wisp, um, I'm just going to go for the burn again, um, here so I can get some... So I just want to get something else in safely basically, so luckily this time I just connect, and due to this and the defense um, investment my Rotom Watch, I could tank this superpower from this thing very, very easily. So um, here I'm going to Will Wisp again, actually, and that's a misplay. Um, thinking that Fal would want to uh, switch into his Skarmory or Latias, putting a D Knight switch in, because um, obviously this this T Tar really can't do anything to um, to my Dragonite. I thought he might predict that, and that's probably thinking too complex in my head right there. Um, so, but he does just stay in to give the Fire Blast because after the uh, the burn and the um, attack draft from Superpower, Fire Blast is actually going to be uh, out damaging Superpower despite the resistance. So, here I'm going to switch out to Gliscor and hope to try and set up on this Tyranitar, but Fal actually makes the right move and switches to a Skarmory instead, so I set, set up a sub, and that is really, really quite bad for me. Um, wasting 25% of my Gliscor's HP, and again, potentially giving him another layer of spikes. So. I'm going to have to switch out to Rotom Wash here, since it's really the best thing I have to take on Skarmory, but Faldron goes for a safe Whirlwind, which, um, very, very nice move. Uh, would have prevented my Gliscor from going for the Sword Stance if I had gone for it, and um, also punishes me for um, trying to switch out. So I'm going to get Whirlwinds into Sizzle, which is really, really quite bad. Um, terrible matchup for me, uh, as unless Skarmory goes for a Roost, my Choice Band Superpowers won't be doing much at all, and since he's at full HP, he isn't going to Roost. 
I'm going to U-turn here um, out as his Skarmie gets another their spikes, and I make a relatively big misplay here, U-turning into Rotom Wash, forgetting that it would get hit by Sandstorm because I'm a dumb fuck. If I hadn't missed that Willowis versus Taranta, it might have been different. Um, I would have lived another turn, but realistically, if you actually think through it, I would have rested up, but he has two Pokemon with phasing moves, so I realistically wouldn't have been able to wake up for the rest of the battle. It wasn't as big a misplay as I think I like to make it out, but still, it's it's just not good. I've lost pretty much the only thing that can break through Skarmory very, very easily, so I switch into Dragonite here, and the only thing I can do is really go for the Fire Punch, as this Skarmory is a massive ass to my team. Luke can do about 50% with a life of close combat, assuming he's physically defensive, the standard set. So, um, uh, so my primary goal is mainly just to weaken this thing to the point where Luke can do a nice amount of damage. So, um, if I was going to make the obvious switch to Heatran, but I couldn't afford to go for the outrage prediction that, uh, predicting that in case Faldron ended up leaving his Skarmory in. Um, as some choice lock, I have to switch it out, and my best bet to switch into Heatran at this point is Taranta. Foul goes for the hint about ice, I'm guessing because he's not sure um, if he's, he wasn't sure if my Dragonite was choice bound or Lum DD at this point. And I'll just go for a superpower here because it'll KO his Heatran or Taranta. And this Taranta gets walled by Skarmory no matter what I do, so I might as well go for the move that gives him the best chance of taking something down. So um, Foul switched into his burnt Taranta as Death Father, really just after the Choppleberry. So either Foul and threw his team together very quickly like I did and accidentally ended up with two Stealth Rock users. Or well, this is actually a Chopple uh, 4 attack Taranta, something like Superpower, Pursuit, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, maybe Rock Slide, maybe Crunch somewhere, I don't know. But um, that's definitely an interesting set. So if I was going to go to Skarmory here, and um, yeah, I can't really do much to this thing, locked in Superpower, um, obviously minus one attack. I couldn't do anything at, like, at, uh, at minus zero at like standard level, so when I've um, got an attack drop, I really can't do anything. I'm just going to go into Dragonite, set up, just set up that third layer of spikes, I believe now, and that's not great for me. So here, because I um, went for the Fire Punch last time, I'm just going to go for the Outrage. Um, but unfortunately, this time he just stay in. Um, just Again, it's, I'm just being out predicted, predicted here. It's pretty much a 50-50 shot, and uh, I'm just calling them wrong, so that isn't good for me. And I do get Whirlwinded out here into my Tarenta, and because of the Stealth Rock and the spikes, out on the field, I am going to go down to those, which is not great for me. So, here, um, I'm going to go into my Dragonite again, I believe. Uh, not completely sure. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to Lucario. Okay, right. Um, just get as much damage on it as possible. And at this point, I was beginning to question whether he even had Brave Bird or not. Because he hasn't used it all the game. He's just whirlwinded like, whenever he's been in like, a bad situation. And because he had spikes up, I'm, I'm guessing he had reason. He had reason to go for the whirlwind, but it's still suspicious. He hasn't used Brave Bird at all. Not against the, like, a, a, not against the Glide Score. Not against Dragonite here. It's suspicious. I'm just going for the close combat just to scout for it. I mean, if he does have Brave Bird, um, I, I'd, I'd expect him to go for it there, maybe. But he just whirlwind again. So now I'm really starting to question whether he's that Brave Bird or not. If he doesn't, then I can just get Glide Score to the last poke and then just set up against it, and I'd, I'd be good. Um. Sadly, I didn't think of that exactly during the battle. I did think maybe he doesn't have uh, maybe he doesn't have Brave Bird, and then that was as far as the thought process went, which is unfortunate. But you know, um, hindsight is always twenty twenty, I guess. So he goes into his uh, Heatran here on my Fire Punch again. He's going to upload it again. So uh, I'm going into Lucario. He's going to switch out here and go to Latias, I think, on the close combat. And because his Latias is most likely going to be two up two HP, two up two speed, and um, not going to be a uh, physically defensive set so much. It's going to take a metric fuck turn from that close combat. Going to do about 45%, so that's brilliant for me. So here, I think... I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking, I'm thinking, right? So, if I go through... Extreme Speed isn't going to KO, because um, Extreme Speed and a stab close combat are around about the same um, uh, base power uh, against this thing, so I don't want Extreme Speed. If, if I have Extreme Speed, he could recover off the damage and be fine. But he actually he misclicked them with the um, meant to go for the Dragon Pulse as I go for the Ice Punch, predicting the recover when he actually goes for the Raw. So that's a bit confusing what I just said. Basically, he, he wanted to Dragon Pulse, he, he misclicked the Raw, which allows me to KO him with Ice Punch. But in the end, it's mad too much. He beats in Terrakian, um, and this is pretty much game now. I mean, the only way I've, I'm going to win this now is if I get loads and loads of. Uh, um, a Sandvale uh, Haxes with his Gliscor. So I'm just going to bring Gliscor now. Um, I think I might be, able to, might be able to tank a close combat from that much HP. Most likely, uh, it is resisted, and Gliscor still does have natural bulk despite no investment. 
So he goes into Skarmory here. I went for the Earthquake for whatever reason. I saved the Acrobatics despite his Heatran, still having his Balloon intact, and it would have KO'd his Terrakion anyway, minus one defense. So I don't know why I did that, but that's just dumb. So I go into Sizzle here, and uh, he's just going to go for the uh, Whirlwind. This does pretty much show me now that he doesn't have Brave Bird. So, um, get Whirlwind back into Glide Score, and, um, can't really do all that much, to be perfectly honest. I think I'm going to go for a Sword Stance here, uh, just on the off chance that I do get the Sand Veil activation, which would be very, very nice, but, um, that isn't going to be the case, I don't think, here. So, he's going to go for the Whirlwind again, brings back into Skarm, and that is going to KO, not Skarm, but right to Scizor, and the Hazards are going to kill it. So, Scizor did practically nothing in this battle, I don't think. I think all it did was literally switch in on something got forced out and just died to lots of hazards, so that's pretty much it. So yeah, good game Sizzle, you did great. So um, I'm just going to glide score. Pretty much my, I think it's my last poke now at this point. Just going to go for the acrobatics, um, not really much I can do. Um, hopefully he'll bring in something. Um, yeah, so you just get to Heatram. Uh, acrobatics with Flight Gems is going to an absolute ton to this thing. I mean, this, this is like 40%, that's insane. Uh, which is very, very nice, and uh, I'm just going to be able to outspeed and carry with an earthquake here, which is going to be cool. And now he's going to have to go into Terrakion on the next uh, next turn and uh, go into go for the close combat, try and hit through Sandvale, and uh, he does now be the game. So, yeah, I think that was pretty good for my first uh, Project Mushroom upload. Hope you did all enjoy this battle. Uh, if you did, then leave a, um, a like or something, or a nice comment or whatever, and um, check out my channel if you want as well. So, um, hope you'll enjoy this one, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.